All right, everyone, then watch this video for, wow, Friday's gonna be here already. Friday, May 3rd, um, start off showing you the SPY as I always do. We sold off again this morning and ended up hitting the 20 day. Um, to me, there's no damage to the chart or anything. We're still basically sitting right at all time highs. Um, here's what I'll be watching tomorrow. Now, ABIO, it's one of those weird ones that you don't know what the heck to do with because you had this monster run, but then you had this monster gap up and a little pop and then a reversal. So who's in charge? Who's winning right now? I honestly don't know, right? But as a day trader, I gotta have something that can move like this on a chart for the next several days. So that's why it's on a chart, all right? Um, DFFN, huge move today. Um, I actually did call one trade. I missed the early run in this, but I'll slide this over. Um, I called it over, you basically had this high, then you had this lower high. Um, and it, it had topped out right here at the half. So when it came back down, you can see the screenshot, DFF and over the half idea is close and I'd already called it earlier. So for those of you that weren't in chat, I just took a screenshot to show you that I called it. Watch for volume if you like it. And the interesting thing about this one is I typed that out at 2.13 in the afternoon and 15 seconds. And you can see I placed my order at 2.13 and 18 seconds. Now these could be a little bit off because this is uh, the chat room time and this is the uh, my actual broker. So they could have been a few seconds, but either way, what happened was, you know, I'd already called it over the half and then it started to go back up. I type this out into the room and after I type it, volume starts to come in. So I throw my cursor over to the trading matrix, which is like the, uh, on trade stations called the matrix on, um, oh, uh, E-Trade. That's what I, I couldn't think of E-Trade. Um, it's called the trading ladder. Anyway, you guys know how I trade. You've seen the videos in the course. I slide over and I just know that I want it um, at the half or anywhere between where it was trading and the half. So I just w zoomed over and clicked because I saw the volume coming in. So that's why if you look at this and say, well, why the hell did he call it over the half and then put a limit of 548? It's because it started to move a few seconds after I typed it. And a lot of times I'll miss a trade because I'm busy typing it for the room. So anyway, typed it, sent it, saw the volume coming in, so I, I do this with my mouse, whoop, and I bring it over and just click. I knew I was above where it was trading, um, so it didn't really matter to me. I you know, felt like it was gonna go. So anyway, filled, uh, I'm sorry, limit of 548, filled at 544, and it's one of those, you know, every trade we take, we try to find scenarios where we'll be green right away, and this is another exact uh, example of that, right? Literally enter there, and this is a five minute candle, so within five minutes it's up I don't know, 60 cents or so. Uh, just a nice, easy trade. Simple half number inflection point. And you had the high of day above as another potential catalyst. And while I'm showing, I'll show you PRPO2 for those that weren't there. I actually did the old second mouse play for those of you that weren't there. It broke 10 here. Looked like it was going to roll over and then it meanders back up. And um, I, think, I think when it was right about here maybe, Wayne and I are both on the mic, as you know. I said, hey, Wayne, are you watching this second mouse through 10? And he said, that's the only thing I'm watching. And he said something like, get out of my head, because uh, he, th he thinks it's uncanny sometimes that um, we're both watching the same thing. I said, hey, Wayne, you know, we've got the same watch list. We've got the same stuff in front of us, and we built the course together, so we're looking for the same things. Anyway, another perfect example. Um, and as I showed you in the last one, you can see my fill here today. The limit of 10 filled at 995. It was another one where it had broken this lower high, which I don't know what that was. I think that was maybe 990, something like that. And so once it got above that, I thought, hey, we're gonna rip through 10, did a limit of 10, got filled at basically 996, but within, within seconds, these are two minute candles, within seconds, we're just ripping into new highs. Another whole number inflection point and green right away. That is always my goal when I trade is to find these entries where I don't have to go, oh man, what did I just do, right? It got long and all of a sudden I'm, um, I'm red, so. Anyway, it is back, it's great to be back trading full time. Um, teamwork and chat's been fantastic. One last thing I gotta show you and then I'm gonna go into the watch list for tomorrow. Uh, tweeted this today, Beyond Meat, B-Y-N-D, became public today, right? So I tweeted, Beyond Meat sounds like the name of a lesbian roller derby team. And I greatly offended somebody and <laughs> uh, I still think it's funny. All right, anyway, I had to share that because I, I, I don't care who you are, that's freaking funny. Um, all right, so ABIO um, went into that one, DFFN, talked about it. Definitely, again, this is extended, but I want to watch it tomorrow um, because of the strong close. S-I-E-N, 
I was watching this one earlier in the week and now it kind of like after this pop is kind of flagging it's it broke out today on volume we're gonna watch that for some follow-through uh, let's see RBZ again you can't see it. these candles are so squashed together you can't see it unless I go to like uh, we'll go to 15 minute candles here there it is all right so 15 minute candles you've kind of got this you had this pop back here to 799 then a lower high a lower high and now it's kind of trying to break to the upside you can argue loosely argue an inverse head and shoulders there but you have to squint to see it and maybe be a little drunk as well but you could also kind of argue uh, cup and handle here it's certainly interesting back here it hit the um, 748 right here it hit 749 today it hit 745 so I really like this over the half right over 750 sometime tomorrow um, let's keep our eyes on that one uh, RHE man I, I missed a couple opportunities in this one but a nice pop today but it gave a lot of it back so um, this pop all happened on about 1 million shares you know the low f low float tiny float stocks have been running lately and for no other reason than I think a group of traders say hey this one's got a tiny float and then people pile in and I honestly unless there's news I don't know about I think that's what happened with DFFN and sometimes they roll over because they had no news and it's just traders pumping it and then that you know and then everyone gets word that hey there's nothing going on here we better get the hell out of the stock and then um, they roll over but also sometimes and again DFFN may have had news but I couldn't find any uh, but what can also happen is people pile in short because something didn't have news have news and then they have to keep covering because it won't go it won't roll over right and I kind of think that's what happened with DFFN again could be wrong um, but that's kind of the nature of the market we're in right now is, is literally groups of traders saying hey here's a low floater so all I can do um, is play the charts right so that's that's the way I'm handling it. I'm waiting for these uh, low risk beautiful inflection point trades so I can get my get my green on right away right after an entry so anyway that's DFFN um, talked about SIE and uh, RBZ I already showed you that one with 15s um, I, okay RHE is the one I was on All right, I guess I tried so RHE um, with it closing in the middle of its range I'm certainly not in love with it but it's another one that's got a tiny float and I honestly think that's the only reason it ran we'll see VTVT had a pop four days ago that topped out at 165 today it hit 164 so I kind of like it over this kind of week-long range we'll see ARCI this one's kind of obscure too because everyone from this day is underwater actually everyone from this day and even the next day pretty much is underwater but it is starting to curl back up and again I think you've got another tiny float scenario plus it topped out for several days kind of right at the whole number five you know give or take a penny so this one might just push through five with volume one of these days so for that reason I threw it on watch I am not in love with that daily chart Pinterest PINS IPO just out of the gate just ripped for like six seven days straight then gapped up and now you got three red days in a row I'm gonna watch that for a bounce play tomorrow ATEC ATEC really nice move here now you got a couple days lower kind of getting close to that buy zone we talk about all the time um, on declining volume the last couple days and then lastly NOVN um, I like this setup other than like, like I would prefer these two red candles to have been here and here so my problem with this is you had over 15 million shares this day and the very next day it opens kind of in the middle of the previous day's range so it's like nobody's winning longs and shorts and now you've got another red day um, so it's not flagging near the highs of the big move but I still want to watch it all right you got uh, declining volume the last two days and it's still inside of the big days range so sometimes uh, you know after a couple days it'll curl back up and rip again all right that's my watch list um, we'll find some morning gappers as well um, let's keep up the great teamwork I'll see you all tomorrow in chat